Hey guys, it's Stephanie from The Well Doing Mama, and today I wanna to share with you three of my favorite easy dump and go crock pot recipes. I love to have these recipes for Sunday mornings, so we'll throw them in before we go to church, usually about seven or 8 a.m. I'll get them in the crock pot, cooking usually on high, and then they will cook while we're at church. When we get home around noon, we'll have a nice, warm, healthy, and very affordable budget-friendly meal for our family. And that helps us not feel like we need to stop and pick something up. When we get home from church, we're all very hungry and we're ready to eat and ready to have that time. And then Sunday afternoon naps or football, depending on what's going on. Also, these are really great meals for days that you maybe either need to get out and run errands in the afternoon, you've homeschooled all morning, you've had your really strong homeschool day, and then you need to get out and run some errands or your kids have an activity or you wanna meet some friends at the park, but you also need to have dinner done and you don't wanna walk in the door at 4.30 and be like, oh no, what am I cooking for dinner and have to start from scratch and all of that. So these are gonna be three meals. At the end of the video, I'll tell you the cost of each meal and you'll see that these are very budget friendly for your family because that is important to be able to stick with our grocery budget. So I hope you enjoy watching these three these three crock pot meals. Hey everyone, today's crock pot meal that I'm gonna share with you is easy crock pot cream cheese chicken chili. I guess it's what's called. So here is the recipe. And it is from, let's see, does it say where it's from? Yummyhealthyeasy.com. And so I like to put crock pot meals in and before we leave for church, when we get home, something is done and completely ready. I really like easy ones that are easy to dump and go. So I'm gonna move you over and show you what I'm putting in the crock pot. Well, I'll not make sure any of the ingredients. I already have chicken in here. I dumped it in already so that I can wash my hands before I talk to you. And then let's move down here. Okay. So I have Cream cheese, I'm gonna double the recipe, probably. We'll see how much we'll fit in the crock pot. Ranch dressing. Cans of black beans, I have two cans. Two cans of Rotel. Corn, it says canned corn, but I'm using frozen. And then we have cumin, garlic powder, chili powder, and I'm gonna put garlic powder in even though that's not in there. So let's move closer and I'll dump all this in and show you what it looks like. Okay, so let's dump all this in and see what we have. I, like I said, I have the chicken in up there already. I am going to leave the juice in because I don't want it too dry because I, don't know, I guess I'm afraid it'll be too, cook too much. This is about two pounds worth of chicken. And I'm going to put in two cans of black beans. You could also use uh, dried black beans that you cook and that would be cheaper. And the way I would do that is I would cook them all night in the crock pot. Just put a whole bag in there overnight with some water in the crock pot and then in the morning they'll be completely cooked. And then you can just pull out what you don't need because if you're using a whole bag you need to pull out probably two to three cups of the cooked beans. And then you could add in everything right there to the crock pot and it would already be, you wouldn't even have to wash it back out. But I didn't want to have to cook black beans because I was already cooking white beans for dinner. Okay, some corn. I need to open the next bag. This is a two pound bag of corn, so I don't need. The nice thing about soups is you can kind of do with them what you want. Ranch dressing. I've heard some people make this themselves. I'm sure it wouldn't be super difficult. I've mixed together seasonings before when I haven't had it for whatever reason. That is not cut open all the way. Come on. There we go. Okay. And then it doesn't actually say to put garlic powder, but it's a soup and it feels like it should have garlic, so... Okay, these are both garlic. Glad I checked. I need onion powder, not two garlic powders. There's my onion powder. And some cumin. I think this is 
Got to take the thing off this. Ah. Okay, well that wasn't so great. But here we go. Put some cumin in. Then I'll worry about that later. Or maybe now, because I can't get the cumin out because it's there. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Okay. Some cumin in. That looks good. Remember, I'm doubling it. You could measure out. It does actually say a teaspoon of cumin and then a tablespoon of chili powder. So I would need two tablespoons. Like I said, you could actually, I'm just going to put all what's left in there. You could measure it out. That'd be totally great. I'm not going to, but. Usually the first time I make a soup, I kind of measure it out to see. And now I'm going to put in the cream cheese. I have it on high. The chicken, what is great about this recipe is you don't have to pre-cook the chicken. You just put the raw chicken at the bottom and all this stuff on top. And then when I get home, all I've got to do is shred up that chicken and it will be done. I don't want the cream cheese right on the side of the crock pot because it'll burn if it's touching the side of the crock pot. So I'm going to try to put the cream cheese so it doesn't touch the side of the crock pot. Mostly because I don't like trying to get it off after it's burned onto the side of the crock pot. So I really like easy kind of dump and go type of meals for Sunday mornings so that I can get them in quickly and then get, we can get ready and get out the door for church. Okay, so that is everything that needs to go in there. I'm gonna double check the recipe, black beans, corn, rotel, ranch, cumin, chili powder, onion powder, cream cheese, chicken, done. I always like to double check my recipes because I tend to forget stuff. Okay, so that is everything. I'm gonna put the lid on and then after church, when it's cooked, I will show you what it looks like. Make sure your crock pot's plugged in. Don't ask me why I'm reminding you of that, because obviously I've forgotten many a time. So we'll put the lid on. I'll scoot it back out of the way. That whole thing took me six minutes and 40 seconds. So it's faster than going through the drive-thru to just do this. And it's way, way cheaper for your family. So there you go. See you in a little while. Okay, so we are back from church, and I took the lid off, and I just mixed this up. The chicken that I put in the bottom just shredded right up into the soup, and so this is what it looks like. And let me show you. I made a bowl for one person already, and I'm going to serve it with some tortilla chips. I need to go get some more from downstairs, and I think we have a bowl of peaches. So that will be our after dinner or after church dinner. Hey everyone, welcome back. And today I'm going to show you another super quick crock pot meal. This one is from this cookbook, Don't Panic Dinners in the Freezer. This has some really good recipes. It's actually written so you could do freezer meals. I've done it a little with it, but see, it gives you your list of ingredients and then it gives you times one, times three, and I think. No, times three, times six, times nine, and then the single recipe here. So I used to use it, but now sometimes we need the times three just to feed our family because there's so many of us. So for those that don't know, we're a family of 10, and we have eight kids ages 19 to three, which means we are feeding, we are almost to four teenagers. For like three months, I'm going to have four teenagers in our family. So that's kind of fun. And then my older is no longer a teenager after that, so... Okay, so let me turn you around and I'll show you what I'm going to throw in the crock pot. So, so easy to throw this one together. Okay, so let me show you what we have. We have some corn, two bags of corn, some garlic. I like to use these little jars of minced garlic. It just saves a lot of time. Green chilies. Um, great northern beans. You could use homemade beans. When I do that, I like to just throw a bag of beans in the crock pot, cover them water, let them cook all night. And then in the morning I can drain them and my beans are ready for a soup. But I knew we were going to be gone yesterday and I would not want to do that when I got home. So just bought a few cans of beans. Then we have cumin, red, ground red pepper, onion powder. It calls for oregano. I have none, so I'll throw in a little Italian seasoning. 
because I'm daredevil like that. And then I have two bags of pre-cooked shredded chicken. Best secret ever. Take chicken breast, couple big packages, throw them in, let them cook up, shred them in your KitchenAid, freeze them. These are each two cups. Two cups is about a pound of cooked chicken. And then when you need to make something, they're ready to go. So one of my big favorite tricks. Okay, and chicken broth. And I use this. If you've seen my videos, you know this. I use this for my chicken broth. I think it's, let's see what it says. I never actually read it. A teaspoon for one and a half cups. So you really don't need very much, but I just pour some in and add more. Okay, so I've already turned on my crock pot. These are still frozen. They will unfreeze. You could also throw them in the microwave to unfreeze them if you want. I might have to get that out. I am not totally doubling this, but I'm a lot doubling this. It calls for a 15 ounce can of corn and I'm using 24 ounces of frozen corn. Okay, a couple spoonfuls of garlic. And then, oh, I need to open all these up. So these diced green chilies, let's see, these are four ounces. I think it calls for one four ounce can. Do, do, do. Yep, one four and a half ounce can. These are just four. I'm putting in two. These are not super spicy, but they do add a lot of really great flavor. The spice will come with that crushed red pepper, but you can decide how much to put in based on the amount of spice your family likes. Yes, we feed this to everybody. Our little ones learn to eat stuff. We are not super spicy family. My husband likes to add spice to anything I make because, I not say anything, a lot of things I make, he'll add spice because he doesn't think I put enough in. Okay, I dropped this can as I was coming up the stairs. So it's not been dented except for the last like two minutes. We keep all of our extra, that I do not want to throw away. We keep our extra canned goods, boxes, cereal, things like that. Downstairs, we do not have a super huge kitchen up here or a big pantry, so we keep all of our extra stuff down there. Okay, so all of that's in, and then I need to put in, I take the lid off the cumin. It's supposed to be a tablespoon of cumin, so put in quite a bit. We do like cumin around here. It says to cut up an onion. I am not feeling like cutting up an onion this morning, so we'll do onion powder. I don't have oregano, so we'll put in a little bit of this Italian seasoning. Pretty sure I've done that before. Spices add so much to your food. If you do not spice your food, try it. You'll like it. Okay. A little bit of crushed red pepper. Don't want too much. Now, I used canned beans, so I'm not necessarily going to add extra salt. If I used homemade beans, I would want to add extra salt straight to the beans. So I'd put the beans in here and then I would sprinkle them with salt and mix it up. I found that really helps with the flavor because beans don't have any salt in them when you make them yourself. And if you just add to the soup, it gets saltier, but I find if you add them straight to where the beans are and stir them up, that helps a lot with that flavor. And then some of the chicken broth powder. And this has quite a bit of salt in it too. So this has, ooh, 540 milligrams of salt. And then all I'm going to do is add water and put the lid on. And then it will cook. I will stir it before we leave it. I have it on high. I will probably turn it to low right before we leave for church because everything is already cooked. And leaving it on high right now will allow it to unfreeze the chicken and the corn. The recipe calls for five cups of chicken broth, so five cups of water. I'm going to add, obviously, a little bit more because I added more stuff. Don't have room to totally double it, but we will put make a pretty full crust. And I will just leave it like that. I'll stir it right before we leave for church. And then I'll show you what it looks like when we get home.
Okay, so home from church, and here's what our white chicken chili looks like. And one bowl of it made. And I'm going to serve it probably just with some butter bread and some oranges that we have in the fridge. So super fast and quick, but makes a really nice, hearty, yummy, and warm meal when you get home. Hello, today I'm going to show you another quick and easy dump and go type of crock pot meal that you can throw in real quick. Today you can see it's really sunny outside right behind me. Beautiful, gorgeous December day. But so we're not doing this right before we leave for church in the morning, but we are doing this on an afternoon, school afternoon. I got a lot of school I want to get done with the kids this afternoon. And so I'm going to get this all thrown in. It's right after lunchtime. Get it all thrown in, let it cook. And then when dinner time rolls around, I have some cheap loaves of bread from the discount shelf at Walmart that I'll just heat up in the oven and we'll have the soup and that and some fruit to have for our dinner. So this is a corn chowder. I have no idea. I've had this for a very long time, so I do not know where the recipe came from. That's a single portion. I'm going to kind of up the portion as we go. I did make one mistake when I was shopping. There were a lot of people in the canned aisle. So I did not buy the creamed corn that I was supposed to. I don't buy canned corn very much. I don't like canned corn that much, but in this, it's great. But I needed cream corn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my canned corn. Then I'm going to put it, use my immersion blender. Well, I throw my recipe on the floor. Use my immersion blender to kind of blend it up and cream it up a little. So I have a bunch of potatoes cut up. Now this part took me probably 10 minutes to cut up the potatoes. If you're in a big hurry, you could easily use um, like a bag of frozen potatoes. That would be fine, but the fresh potatoes are a lot cheaper. So if you're trying to go cheap, it doesn't take that long to cut them up, but if you're in a big hurry, you could totally use the little hash brown sized potatoes already frozen. I have, where's, oh, there it is. I have four cans of cream, of uh, corn. You're supposed to use cream style. I didn't, like I said, I'm going to use the blender. And then I have three cans. The original recipe calls for two. I'm kind of upping it some all the way around of cream of chicken soup. You can make a homemade version if you want, but I wanted this to be super easy and fast. So I have the cans, a couple tablespoons of butter. That's left from cookie baking. Oh, ham. This was some ham I cut up from last time we had a ham. And I just chopped up the pieces. Man, it is bright outside. Chopped up the pieces, and they've been frozen in the freezer, so I pulled them out. They're going to go in there. And some milk. I'm looking at the wrong recipe because I dropped this one on the floor. I am leaving it. Oh, maybe that. Oh, it is cream corn. It's cream style. Huh. Cream style means creamed corn. So it is cream. Can you see? I'll show you. Hmm. I wonder if I can make you higher so you can see better. Okay. That's the best I can do. Okay. So I won't have to blend it because it is already kind of what? Nice. Okay, so you're going to put in your corn, your soup mix, and your two and a half. I'm going to put in, because I'm not quite doubling it, but I'm not quite not doubling it. I'm just kind of guesstimating. So I'm going to put in probably about four cups, three and a half to four cups of milk. And then you're going to mix all that together. Okay, let me grab a knife to pull that out of there. One of the things I want you guys to see is that you can put together a very, very quick meal for your family if you just think a little bit of head ahead on those busy days so you don't get to the end of the day and not know what you're doing for dinner. I don't do a lot of crock pot meals during the week, but if you are struggling with dinner, they definitely can be a lifesaver of having dinner done and then you're not tempted. If you're somebody who likes to go out to eat, you're trying to cut back on that. Having something already made is going to obviously Make it pretty easy to not eat out because you already have the food made. And honestly, this is faster than going and picking something up for dinner. 
and it's really not that much work. We don't eat out very much, and when we do, it always shocks me because, well, number one, the cost. But number two, just the amount of work to, like, give everybody the food that they've requested. If we do, like, let people pick, we're trying to serve it up and figure that out. So we're just going to stir this part up. So if the soup gets mixed in, I'm not going to worry too much about it because as it heats up, it'll be a lot easier to mix together. But, okay. I will leave this sitting here so I can add it later. Potatoes, those are the biggest thing we're going to have to make sure get cooked. I tried to cut them into pretty small pieces. See, I left the skin on because I don't like peeling potatoes. It has good nutrients. It's good for us. Okay, now butter will, of course, melt. And yeah. I'm a little leery of turning this to high because it has the milk in it, but the milk's mixed in pretty well. And I do want my potatoes to cook. And it says you can add salt and pepper to taste. I'm not going to because it has all that cream soup in it. I don't really want to add more salt. I do not like my food super salty, so. So there is what the corn chowder looks like before it's done. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Just so you know, timing this, we're at seven minutes. So this meal, less than 10 minutes, especially if you use frozen potatoes. Even if you have to chop potatoes, less than 20 minutes to throw all this together. So a very quick and easy way to put together a crock pot meal when you've got to get out the door and go somewhere. Okay, so it has been about four hours, and the corn chowder is completely done. The potatoes did cook. I cooked it on high, so it burned just a teeny tiny bit around the edge because it does have milk in it. It feels like it's the corn that burnt more around the edge, but only a teeny tiny bit, but it, the potatoes did get done in that four hours. So you can see all that yummy goodness, and we are just going to have it with some bread that I found on the clearance rack at Walmart. I'm just going to show you the bread. Hold on. Some bread that we found on the clearance rack at Walmart. And I will probably pull out some fruit for the kids too. So that is corn chowder. 10 to 20 minutes to put together. Four hours to cook and then you have supper. Hey everyone, I just wanted to come back and tell you about the three crock pot meals that I made. They're all very easy. Put ingredients into the crock pot put the lid on, turn it on, let them cook for four or five hours, come home to a meal that's nice and yummy. So we really like to use these before we go to church. So a lot of days before church, I'll throw this in the crock pot and then we'll have um, lunch, dinner, whatever you want to call it when we get home. And then I also did one that was just on a regular school day. I know a lot of homeschool moms use crock pots for school days. I typically haven't just because we don't want to eat every day out of a crock pot and I know I need it for Sundays, but they are also really great if you have afternoon activities right after lunch, the days I use them right after lunch, I throw the items in and then we go about our afternoon schoolwork, run to whatever activity we have, we come home and dinner is ready. So that is also really great. You can also do that with like a casserole or something of that sort. You can prep it all. And then my oven has a delay time feature where the it'll delay turning on. So you obviously don't want to leave it in there too long because it's not in the fridge and it won't stay cold. I happen to often have an extra kit around that can throw it into the oven. And so just remember, don't put the cold glass into the warm oven. You might break things. Okay, so I haven't actually had that happen, but I have broken a bunch of mason jars that we've been using used for science experiments. Okay, but I wanted to tell you about the cost of each of these meals because I want you to see that it can be easy and quick and still really budget friendly. So I went through and figured out the cost of each one. I have it written on a notebook page here. So the cream of the cream cheese chicken soup, if you made a single batch of it, would add up to seven dollars and ninety-one cents. These are prices from Walmart.com. I do buy stuff from Aldi, which Everything at Aldi was cheaper than what it was at Walmart. So it would have actually been cheaper had I just bought everything. I had pieces here. I bought pieces there. So I didn't have it all bought at one time. 
but I put it all into Walmart. For seasonings, I am counting 10 cents a teaspoon for seasonings because I figured it up and that's what seasonings are. Okay. That if there's, there was at least six servings, we serve that with chips. That one is a really thick stewy soup. It's not thin and watery. So six servings served with chips and kind of like dip it with chips. $1.32 a serving. And then the white chicken chili was seven thirteen. Again, six servings, $1.18 a serving. You might have even been able to get more servings out of that one. And the corn chowder was $8.84, six servings, so $1.47 per serving. The most expensive part of the corn chowder was the diced ham. If you actually bought a ham and diced it up for to use in meals and things, which I'm hoping to do a ham week and show you five different ways you can use a ham. I'm hoping Aldi has them on sale today. I'm going to buy some to do that. So that was $5.26 for one pound of diced ham. You could also use lunch meat ham, which is a little cheaper. But if you bought a ham and then chopped it up, which is where that ham came from, it would be way cheaper than the $5.26, which would make that meal way cheaper. At least six servings, $1.47 a serving. So the chicken was more at Walmart than Aldi. Also the beans, both the cream cheese chicken and the white chicken chili had beans in them. If you made those from scratch, from dry beans, that would make it even cheaper. The cream cheese chicken chili, you could... Um, add in more black beans, add one can of black beans, but if you wanted to stretch it more, put in two or three cans of black beans, and that would stretch that meal a little bit more. You might want to add in a little more Rotel, but you could, you could often stretch a meal by adding in more of the beans. So there you go. Less than $1.50 a serving for each of them. Obviously way cheaper than stopping to pick something up, and they are really hearty, and they're all pretty healthy. They have some extra salt from some of the um, broth and stuff in them, but you could do homemade broth and then you would have less salt. You could buy a low sodium. You could just use water even if you wanted. So there are some ideas. Hope that's helpful for you to figure out some ways to feed your family that just don't put you into the kitchen all day long. Thanks for joining us today. Please leave a comment if you have something else you'd like me to talk about or you have any questions. Please hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos about what we do.